Uh, Wizz Air reporting revenues this morning for the full year, a couple of percent below the average analyst estimates. Uh, but the airline says it remains optimistic about the next 12 months. Uh, Joseph Ferrari, the CEO of Wizz Air, joins us now. Um, how's business? Are you a business that focuses on Central and Eastern Europe? Um, you've been expanding your footprint. Um, just give me a sense of kind of what the market looks like in front of you. Uh, good morning. Um, <clears throat> from our perspective, the market looks uh, pretty robust. Uh, you know, we are seeing GDP growth of 4 or 5% in our yep. uh, core markets in Central Eastern Europe. Um, well, we are expanding there. Uh, I mean, we are growing at a rate of around 20% as we, as we speak. But it's not only Central Eastern Europe, but we are having uh, quite a significant growth delivered here in the United Kingdom. You know, we just set off Visa UK. Yep. Um, so we have that airline flying now, and we are actually quite a bit about the overall market environment. Um, Michael O'Leary was sat in that chair a couple of days ago. Uh, talking about what's going on with the oil price and the impact that it's going to have into into the market, um, I, I can pull up a chart here. This is this is oil in euros, and and the problem with oil at the moment is the dollar's going up and oil is going up. That's making it pretty crunchy. We've seen a significant increase in the cost of fuel. Um, presumably, uh, you're a decent sized airline with a decent balance sheet, so presumably you have the ability to hedge some of this, but some of your competitors don't. Yes, I mean, I think we are actually quite well placed for a higher fuel price environment. First of all, we are hedged quite significantly. Secondly, I think we have the cost base that actually becomes very appealing to the consumer um, under those circumstances. What's going to happen is that uh, actually two things. You're going to see vehicle airlines struggling and not being able to cope with uh, the situation. And secondly, you will see capacity discipline coming into the market. So capacity will move out of the market and you're going to see uh, fares uh, arising as a result of a higher input cost environment. Um, how long does that actually take to happen? Do we need to wait until the winter before that happens? The summer generally is kind of pretty good for most airlines. Uh, I would guess so, because in summer everyone makes money. Yeah. Uh, the real question is how much. Uh, but in winter, the game changes and uh, businesses fall under pressure. So my expectation is that you're going you're gonna to start seeing significant capacity cuts going into the winter period. Ha do, do you try and take advantage of that? It was interesting because Michael was talking about... He, he was kind of flirting with the idea of, of, of kind of Airbus aircraft. And he was kind of... It, it was interesting to kind of read between the lines of what he was saying. And this, kind of reading between the lines, the sense seemed to be, well, if there's aircraft out there that potentially could become available, I might be interested in taking some of those aircraft into my fleet. How would you look at... If there was, if there was capacity that came out and there were aircraft available, would you take advantage of that? Well, you know, our view is that uh, when the industry is backtracking on capacity, that's an opportunity for us to get in and fill yeah. the vacuum and fill the gaps in the, in the marketplace. But you've got, to have the, you've got to have the aircraft to do that. Actually, we do have the aircraft. I mean, you know, we are getting over 20 aircraft delivered in a, in a year. I mean, again, we are growing at a rate of 20%. I mean, we are taking a lot of aircraft into the, into the system. And part of the strategic game, actually, is that once you start seeing uh, market opportunities for more capacity, actually you can move in. And again, we have the cost base to actually support that action. I'm not going to ask you to, to name specific airlines, but, but are, there, are there any areas where you see airlines currently operating that you think must be kind of on the edge? Well, I mean, quite a few of them, as a matter of okay. fact. I mean, if you look at financial performance of the industry, half of the airlines in Europe you know, have not been making money in the last few years, and this was, or this has been the best time in the industry. If you don't make money in the best time in the industry, you will never make money. Yeah. So once the pressure beats up because of uh, cost pressure, then you will start struggling. Okay, let me ask you a kind of related question to try and get, get an idea. Are, are you looking at any new routes that you could potentially be opening? Are you looking at any new bases that you could be potentially opening? You've talked about the UK base, you've got the Vienna base. Kind of, if you are looking ahead, looking at some of these balance sheets and trying to figure out where the opportunities lie, you've got a cost structure that maybe would allow you to make money on some of these routes that currently aren't able to make money. So kind of where are you looking? Well, we are, we are looking in Central and Eastern Europe and we are also looking in Western Europe. Again, subject to market developments and subject to how the consolidation game is playing out, we will be ready to move. But part of it is that consolidation game? Part of it is the consolidation game, yes. France? Well, I mean, I think you can list a number of countries. Uh, Please in, do. I'd in, be, I'd in, be in, delighted. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, France is interesting. I mean, Italy is certainly interesting. And most of Central Eastern Europe is interesting. I mean, right. if you look at the incumbent um, uh, national carriers in Central Eastern Europe, none of them are doing really well. Um, just to back to the aircraft issue, I, most low-cost carriers operate a, a single-type fleet. Mm -hmm. 
So you're either um, 319, 320, 321s, or you're 737, 737 CO, 737 Maxes. Mm -hmm. Can, do, you, do you see that as, as, as the game fragments a little bit and some of these aircraft from different OEMs become available? Do, does that mixed fleet become a little bit more attractive? I, I think there are certain trends. I mean, you are seeing an upgaging trend uh, in the industry. I mean, the, uh, the average seat count per aircraft increases around two to three seats a year yep. globally in the, uh, in the industry. So if you look at our case, you know, we have become very much attracted to the AC-21 operation. Right now, 35% of our seats are flown on AC-21. The AC-21 gives a 10% lower unit yep. cost uh, to, the, uh, to the business. So obviously, we are very upbeat, but this is a conversion process. So we are converting some of our AC-20 capacity into AC-21. AC uh, so yes, I think you are seeing that sort of movement, but I think it is all triggered by efficiency and become more competitive on the pricing side of the equation. Um, just in terms of, of, of what you're seeing more broadly, how is, I'm, I'm curious to see how, so we're, we're focused on Turkey this morning, we're kind of looking mm -hmm. around trying to sort uh, of draw lines between the stories. There's a big, big depreciation in the Turkish lira. Does that make, I, I'm kind of wondering what are the, what are the aspects of, of you thinking about future route planning that drive your thinking? Kind of, would, does that make Turkey more attractive, less attractive? Do you think about other routes in similar kind of ways? Well, you know... You don't fly to Turkey at the moment, do you? Uh, no, no, we don't at the no. moment. Uh, obviously, it is a, a, a possible opportunity, but let's not forget that Turkey is a regulated market, yep. so getting access to the market may be difficult, you know, from an airline standpoint. But basically, what we are looking at is that we are very focused on cost, and we're seeing that uh, for so long as we are delivering the lowest cost in the industry, uh, we should be fine under any circumstances, because if it's good times, we simply just grow more. If it's bad times, we just take market share from the, uh, uh, from the market. And obviously, you need to look around how the consolidation game is playing out, and you need to have sufficient flexibility to move, to move capacity into markets where you see the opportunities. This is what we are trying to do.